So we have now started recording. Um, welcome to our colleagues in the Pacific. Uh, good evening from Vancouver and good morning to the Pacific region. Um, my name is Tony Mays. I am called the Commonwealth of Learning's Education Specialist for Open Schooling. I'm responsible for the first outputs of the Pacific Partnership. Um, the Pacific Partnership consists of an agreement between the Commonwealth of Learning in Vancouver and the Pacific Center for Open, List, Open Learning Development in the Pacific, which is hosted at the University of the South Pacific. And we are supported by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade in, in New Zealand. This is the second in a series of three webinars linked to the digital skills for OER sharing in the Pacific region. Our course facilitator and developer is Dr. Wayne McIntosh from the OER Foundation. He's a, an UNESCO chair in OER um, and also supports the work of the OER Universitas and is therefore considered one of the world's experts um, in open educational resources and the use thereof. At some point, we're hoping to be joined by a special guest and when we know that our special guest has joined us, um, Dr. Wayne McIntosh, McIntosh will then introduce her. Um, for this, from this point forward, I'm going to switch off my video to conserve your bandwidth and hand over to, to Wayne to lead this session. Because this is a webinar session, we are ultimately expecting several hundred people. It is better if you want to ask a question to pose it either into the chat which you can access at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a little icon that says chat. Or if you want to ask a live question, remembering that you will be recorded, raise your hand and then we'll ask you, we'll invite you to ask your question, but you will be recorded if you switch on your video. So I'm going to switch off from here and hand over to Dr. McIntosh to facilitate the session. And we will let you know when our guest speaker um, signs in. Over to you, Wayne. Thanks very much, Dr. Mays. Uh, Bula Talofa Kiora, it's, it's wonderful to be able to connect again with participants uh, in the Digital Skills for OER Sharing course, uh, or DS for OERs for short. Um, as, as Tony mentioned earlier on, there are well, well over 1,400 uh, teachers and educators from across the Pacific uh, that have joined us for the course. And it, it's just been an amazing pleasure for me uh, to be able to interact and engage with you uh, in, in, in the course. Um, as, as I mentioned last time, uh, I originally trained as a, a, a secondary school teacher. Uh, before moving into higher education. And it, it's really wonderful to be able to reconnect with my roots, so to speak, uh, with teachers in the classroom, working at the heart of the education endeavor, which is about sharing knowledge freely. And um, OERs is a, a wonderful way in which we can uh, live out our, our passions, if you will, or uh, our vocation, our professions as educators, uh, in sharing teaching resources for the benefit of our learners. Uh, this afternoon, we are, are, are hoping to have Dr. Angela Yocan, uh, who is uh, Permanent Secretary for Education, Heritage and Arts in Fiji, join us. Um, and I suspect as a senior government official, uh, uh, Dr. Angela has been held up in a, a previous meeting. So uh, the moment Angela arrives, uh, we will uh, introduce her and hand the floor over to Angela. But in the meantime, uh, while, while we're waiting, I thought it might be a good idea uh, just to catch up on uh, some aspects, some brief updates, some tips for participants in the course. And uh, I'll do that by sharing my screen uh, for the, the course. Is that the right screen? No, it won't be that one. It will be... This one here. That should be working. Yeah, that should be coming through. Uh, 
So basically, um, uh, this is the, the course website. Uh, you should all be very familiar with it. It's uh, of interest, uh, hosted on a, a WordPress multi-site, uh, which is an open source content management system that is hosted on the Commonwealth of Learning infrastructure as part of uh, the Pacific Partnership. Uh, the interesting facet of uh, this particular initiative are all the technologies you have been using to interact and communicate with each other are in fact free and open source software technologies. So uh, this is truly an open course in all its respects. Uh, as we said previously uh, in the first webinar, all the instructions you need in order to succeed in this course are provided on the course website. Uh, we uh, encourage you to uh, go through the course guide as well as the uh, section here, uh, uh, how to establish your personal learning environment, which provides all the instructions you need uh, if you get lost with any one of the technologies, the information you need and uh, to move forward is uh, presented there. So if we go and have a look at the course schedule, which is listed under the course guide, you will see a syllabus option, which you can click on, which provides uh, the uh, main overview of the schedule of the course and how we're progressing. Uh, we have already completed uh, the first week, week one, and uh, yesterday we, we started on week two, or uh, the first session there, session four. What I do want to point out uh, as an, an open online course, uh, if you have started a little bit late, uh, don't stress, uh, you will be able uh, to uh, progress at your own pace, uh, study at your own pace. So if you have fallen a little bit behind, don't worry, uh, the course materials will remain open as an open course. So carry on working at, at your own pace. Um, we want you to succeed and um, we wish you every luck with your studies as you progress. This week, we uh, are commencing with the real nuts and bolts of the course, which is really about developing um, open educational resources, teaching resources you'd be able to use in your own classroom. And there are, as I mentioned last week, a number of learning challenges uh, which you are invited to complete where you will be developing teaching resources for the use in your classroom. So if we go uh, look a little bit more closely at the first learning challenge that we have here, um, which is the uh, open image challenge, where you will develop a teaching resource, including uh, two images. We can click through here to the actual learning materials uh, from the course website. Uh, where you can uh, work through the different uh, sections of the course. At this stage, it's very important before you uh, be begin any of the learning challenge challenges is to select a lesson topic uh, that you want to focus on for the development of your teaching resources. The idea here is that you are going to develop uh, three teaching resources for incorporation into a lesson plan. So it's important that you choose your lesson topic that you want to focus on before you actually start commencing work on the individual teaching resources in the lesson plan. So, um, you know, cho choose a lesson that you have in, in enjoyed teaching in the past, or perhaps a, a, a lesson that you're going to be teaching in the near future, so that the time and effort that you're spending on this course uh, can be used effectively in the classroom. We are going to be uh, developing three uh, different types of teaching resources before we commence work on the actual lesson plan. Uh, the first one uh, in session four is the development of a printable teaching resource that includes open images. And the idea here, of course, is that you will go out and, and, and search for openly licensed images uh, that you can incorporate into your lesson plan. The next uh, challenge, which we'll complete this week, uh, or, uh, or the, the current week in the schedule, which runs from Wednesday through to Tuesday, 
will be a, a printable teaching resource where you actually remix and adapt a vector-based graphic. And if you haven't come across vector-based graphics before, uh, we will provide more information about vector graphics uh, in the actual course materials. And the final uh, resource you'll be developing, and that will be in week three, the following uh, week in the schedule, is a multimedia resource, uh, a static audio graphic remix, where you will include some audio that you will fade in and fade out and uh, include a couple of images and, and, and an audio track to familiarize, familiarize yourself and uh, uh, with uh, digital skills in producing multimedia. So as an overview, those are the three resources that we will be developing on the course. And as I said, it's important to choose your lesson topic in advance. The other aspect I wanted to highlight is to give you a, a, a few tips on uh, when you get to the point of actually submitting your resource. You will see towards the end of this learning challenge, uh, there's this task here to complete uh, the image resource challenge. And if you click on that on the sub menu, you will find the instructions that you need uh, for completing the image resource challenge. So all the information you need to complete uh, this challenge is provided there. The, uh, the tasks that you must complete uh, are listed there. What I do want to emphasize, we've had a number of learners who have already submitted the first resources, and uh, many of which uh, we've uh, ha had to request that those resources be resubmitted uh, because they don't meet the minimum requirements. Um, so what I want to point out, it's very important that before you submit your teaching resource, that you work through this checklist before you submit the resource. And the points I want to uh, highlight here is that your resource must contain a minimum of two openly licensed images. And uh, so if you uh, submit a resource that has only one image, uh, we won't approve it for distribution. Um, and I must say, this is not an automated process. When you submit your resource, uh, warm-blooded individuals, myself, and our two facilitators who are assisting on this course will actually be looking uh, at these resources to see that they meet these minimum requirements. Because part of this course is to help you acquire the skills in a correct attribution of openly licensed uh, resources, as well as adding uh, the copyright statements. And the reason we require two images to be included is because there is this question of remix compatibility between open licenses. Some Creative Commons open licenses, you cannot mix with other ones. So one of the purposes of this image challenge is to make sure that you are familiar with the requirements of remix compatibility. And in week one, uh, we did cover remix compatibility. Um, it's listed here. You'll see the third point that you need to check before you submit your resource is that the images that you're mixing together are using compatible licenses. Uh, if you click through to the uh, remix compatibility link, uh, you will see the information uh, about how Remix works. So it's important to make sure that you're using licenses that can be mixed together. Uh, so, for example, you cannot take an image which has a CC BY SA license or a Creative Commons attribution share alike. You cannot remix that with an image which is a Creative Commons attribution non-commercial share alike license because the requirement of the share alike license is when the object is re-licensed it must use the identical license so that's why we want to include two images so just to check to make sure that you have a good understanding of uh, remix compatibility the other aspect which we've noticed from early submissions is that a number of participants haven't been attributing the images correctly. So if you found an openly licensed image, the, all Creative Commons licenses require that the images are attributed. 
And there's a section in the enabling part of the course, the enabling challenges that we covered in the first week, which focuses on how to attribute an image resource, an openly licensed image using the TASL acronym, which stands for the title of the, uh, the resource. So what is the, the name or label of the image? The author must be attributed. So you need to link or list, uh, or, or list the author uh, to, who is the original copyright holder of that image. The S stands for source. So you must link through to the source of the image. Now, a common mistake that uh, many uh, teachers make who are new to attributing licenses, if they find a license, for example, on Flickr, which is openly licensed, they just reference the Flickr website. That is not adequate for linking through to the source of the image. You need to link through to the actual page where the image is downloaded. And I could possibly sh uh, show an example uh, for you because we will actually check the link that you provide for the image when you submit your resource, we will click on that link to see if it goes to the original source of that image. So a good way to test uh, your submission is the hyperlink that you provide for the source of your image. Just check that it actually goes to the original image. Because if it doesn't go to the original image, we will not approve the resource for submission. And the reason we can't approve that resource is because you would be in breach of copyright and exposing yourself to legal risks of not adhering to the copyright. Because the images that you're uh, using, the openly licensed images, there is a legal requirement that you attribute those images correctly. So we want to make sure that you're not exposing yourselves to legal risk. We will check that you have attributed those images properly. Uh, the last requirement, which is very, very important, this is a course about OER. In other words, developing resources where you as the copyright holder give permission for others to use the resource under the conditions you specify. So it's very, very important that when you submit your resource, you apply a, a Creative Commons license that meets the requirements for OER to the uh, resource you've created. If you do not add the copyright statement where you give permissions for the resource to be reused and remixed or whatever license you are applying, it doesn't qualify as OER, which means we will not be able to reuse and share those resources unless as the creator of this resource, uh, you've actually given permission by applying a Creative Commons license. So what I might do just at the moment, uh, I'm just checking, uh, and Gila hasn't been able to arrive yet, but I could at this stage uh, take a couple of questions relating to the submission uh, of your first uh, teaching resource. Uh, so if you do have any questions, please add them to the chat. Um, you should be able to uh, post questions in the chat area or you, I believe you would be able to raise your hand if you've got a question, if you have a microphone enabled device. While we're waiting for uh, questions uh, to come in, what I want to point out is when you submit your resource, you'll see at the uh, bottom here where you uh, get the instructions for submission. Uh, you will see there's a link here to upload your resource for submission. And we're using the Moodle Learning Management System uh, for you to upload your resources you've created and to start earning digital badges, which will enable you to earn the Certificate of Completion as well as the OER Practitioner Badge. But in order to upload your resource, you will need to create an account on Moodle. Now, please remember, this is a separate Moodle site. It's not the same Moodle site that you might be using at your school. It's another Moodle site. So the credentials that you use on your school Moodle site or a Moodle site that you're using will not work on this Moodle site because it's a different Moodle site. Uh, but uh, to create an account on this Moodle site is straightforward. There are detailed instructions to do so. 
Uh, if you go to the uh, first learning challenge to establish your personal learning environment, you will see detailed instructions uh, over here on how to uh, create an account on the Moodle site we are using uh, to receive those submissions. So work carefully through these instructions. I've received quite a number of questions in the forums and on Mastodon uh, for what is the enrollment key uh, for the Moodle site. Uh, the enrollment key is provided here in the course instructions on the website. So you don't need to uh, write it down. Uh, the, the enrollment key is provided for you on the course website. So you have that information um, to submit your resource. So let me uh, cross over and see if we have uh, any questions uh, that have come in so far. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, Wayne. Um, but I think uh, <clears throat> a few people have already uploaded um, their first their first challenge. Um, so maybe it might be useful to just recap what were some of the challenges were in accepting those. I think some people have made multiple attempts. Yes. Um... So we have received a number of uh, early attempts um, uh, in submitting the resources. Uh, a number of those attempts, we've had to uh, request that they be resubmitted uh, because they do not meet the minimum requirements. Uh, in one case, uh, a, a participant resubmitted the same resource five times. And I suspect that the participant uh, may have thought that these resources aren't being checked at some automated process, um, that they were just resubmitting the resource. And we, uh, on each occasion, had to re, uh, request a resubmission. And the, mis the typical mistakes or omissions that we are seeing is number one, images have not been attributed correctly using the TASL acronym. So it means that one or more of the images that are included in the teaching resource have not been attributed uh, in accordance with the requirements of the Creative Commons licenses. So within the course materials, you'll re recall uh, during the early uh, fa phases of the OER development process, we actually had a look at what are the requirements as a part of the enabling challenge for attributing a, a, an image resource. As I uh, mentioned, there's the TASL acronym. It means you must uh, add, uh, cite the title of the image that was provided by the copyright holder. If the copyright holder hasn't given a title, you can create one. You must cite the name or the username of the individual that shared the resource under an open license. You are required to attribute the source of where you found the image, which means you must go directly to the uh, source of the image, not the website, the uh, high level web domain of the website where you found the image. And perhaps I could uh, give an example of that uh, to make sure that we don't fall uh, or, or what that means to uh, attribute the exact source of the image. So here I am, I'm on Flickr, and let's say I want to uh, develop a lesson plan on cats. And so I would go in and I would search for a bunch of lovely cat images. You'll see that there are lots of cat images here. But because we're working with OER, uh, you need to make sure that you're searching for uh, uh, Creative Commons licenses. And given that I am very passionate about things that are open, I want to make sure that my image, that my uh, works are uh, compatible with something we call free cultural works approved licenses. I want to select Creative Commons licenses that allow modifications that meet the requirements of OER, because if you don't allow modifications, it's not OER. But I also don't want to deny anybody the right to earn a living. So I want to allow commercial adaptation. 
And so there are lots of lovely uh, uh, images of cats I could use here. Oh, this is a particularly uh, interesting image here. And so I click on that image, and you'll see if I scroll down here on the Flickr website, uh, the actual license appears. And I can see from the image that is used here, this is a Creative Commons attribution license that has been used for the image. So this is a Creative Commons license that meets my requirements. Uh, and this is the image I want to use. So if I want to attribute the source of this image, I need to make sure that uh, I label the title of the image. Uh, this uh, author has labeled that image or called the image cat. So cat is the title I need to use. The copyright holder of this image is Kevin Dooley. So I need to make sure that I uh, attribute the author, Kevin Dooley, and link to the author's image page. And then finally, I also need to link to the source of the image. And what's very important here on Flickr, you'll see here there's a little arrow at the bottom of the screen. You should click on that arrow to get to the short URL link that will take me directly to the image source. That is the URL that I must use. You should not be using the URL just flickr.com because if you use the URL, URL flickr.com, it's just going to take you to the Flickr website. It's not going to take you to the source of where you downloaded the image. And so we are going to be checking when you submit your resource that you've actually used the hyperlink that takes you to the source of the image. And so that's very important. And it's easy to check when you've completed your resource, just click on the hyperlink you've used uh, for attribution purposes uh, in your submission to see that it takes you to the original image. Because as I've said, the uh, facilitators will be checking that. And if it doesn't go to the source of the image, it's in breach of copyright because you haven't met the uh, attribution requirements of the open license. Uh, we also check to see uh, that you've stated the correct license. So don't just say Creative Commons. You need to state clearly that it's Creative Commons attribution or it's Creative Commons attribution share alike or it's Creative Commons, you know, um, non-commercial uh, 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 share alike uh, that you cite the correct license because we will be checking. We go to the source image to see that it is the correct license. Um, a, a, mis a mistake another learner made, uh, they found another website that had said uh, that the image comes from Pixabay. And I clicked on the uh, attribution link to see whether this, where this image comes from. The, the image just went to the Pixabay website. And by the way, Pixabay doesn't use a, a public domain dedication anymore. And that is how I knew that the uh, image that the uh, student submitted was not the correct license because Pixabay no longer uses a, a public domain uh, dedication. So initially, this uh, might sound a bit confusing, but it's important that we get these attributions right. And in the course materials, there is this detailed activity um, in terms of how you attribute. And so you will see, I just want to see where uh, there's a good example. I remember in the quiz question, um, there was Wayne? an example of a good attribution. Yes. Wayne, can we just pause there for a moment? Um, we have got three questions that have come in. Sure. Um, so one, uh, Gita Krishna is asking, can we use our own photos for images or should it always be an online image? Excellent question, Gita. You will be allowed uh, or we, you will be allowed and we in fact encourage uh, participants to use uh, uh, their own images. Uh, the, requirement, the only requirement of course is um, when you take a photograph, the copyright of the photograph belongs to the photographer. In other words, if you take a, photo, a photograph, the copyright of that image belongs to you. So as the photographer, you do have the authority to uh, apply an open license to that image. 
So you can then uh, license that image under uh, Creative Commons Attribution or Creative Commons Attribution Sharer-like license and use that image in your teaching resource. Um, so please, uh, if you do use your own image, you must just then make sure that you, uh, 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 in your attribution, say, you know, that you are the copyright holder of the resource that belongs to you and what license you are releasing it under. And that's actually a very good point because very often, um, particularly working in the Pacific, it, it's hard to find culturally appropriate images in many cases that are from our region. And so this is a way in which uh, teachers of the Pacific will be able to contribute back to the global commons in um, taking images that are appropriate for our particular context and then applying open licenses to them. So Gita, please, uh, if you want to use your own images, you're most welcome. Thank you, Sorry. Wayne. So when I first share my image, I must put the appropriate license attached to, to it. Uh, correct. Luisa, Luisa Nedrolevu, uh, my apologies if I've mispronounced that, says, if I use a by image, and a by NCSA image in my teaching resource is stating my resource, should it be a by NCSA? Is that correct? In other words, is it the most exclusive license that I should apply? Now, this is an interesting and excellent question. Uh, so um, the there are three licenses that um, are in, in, in play here. There's a Creative Commons, a CC BY license, a BY non-commercial share-alike, and a BY non-commercial share-alike license. Now, the BY non-commercial share-alike license means that the derivative work has to use the identical license of the share-alike license that was uh, in the original uh, resource or the original image. So the only license that can be applied to the derivative work, whereas a by NCSA license is used, is a by NCA license. There's no other Creative Commons license that can be applied to that derivative work because the share alike requires that the identical uh, uh, share-alike license is used for the derivative work. Now, where this gets confusing is sometimes uh, learners or people that are new to copyright licensing think that they can take a CC by NCSA license and remix that with a CC by share-alike license. So CC by SA, remixing it with the CC by NCSA. That is not possible. The fact that both have a share alike in them doesn't mean that you can mix the two together because the one has a non-commercial restriction and the other doesn't have a non-commercial restriction. And because it's a share alike license, you cannot mix two different share alike licenses together. So that can at, at, at times be confusing. So make sure if you selected one image with the CC by uh, uh, or with this share alike in it, that any other images that have a share alike are the identical share alike license uh, in terms of a tip that I can give around uh, that remixing. Thanks, so I, hope Wayne. That, I hope that's answered that question. Yes. Yes. So we have a we have a hands up from Joshua. He wants to make a live question. Wonderful. Joshua. Do you want to switch off your microphone and ask a question? So, am I clear? Yes, I can, can hear you loud hear? and clear. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, well, when nobody the resources yesterday. I I am so I am very proud that I am in this session today because uh, I am uh, really familiarized with uh, the with the explanation that you have just done a while ago. So 
I, I don't want to ask any more questions because I do what I understood all the steps to take. Uh, I raised my hands before your explanations. Sir. Oh, a wonderful. No, I totally understand. And I'm, I'm pleased that my explanation helped. So I've kind of already answered your question. Um, so uh, thank you for that. And uh, thank you for popping in uh, to say hello. It's, 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 it's wonderful to, to, to meet the participants virtually. Uh, so uh, thank you for that contribution. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Wayne. Um, we have a question in the chat from Lozana Nagan. Does that mean when we go to the original source, it will automatically tell us whether it is what its attribution details are? Yes, another uh, excellent question, Lozana. Uh, it's and, and this is why it's always important to go back uh, to uh, the original source uh, of all the images. Uh, let me just get back to uh, that section where we are, uh, where we covered the uh, attribution requirements. Um, so, for example, while I'm waiting for that page to load, um, going to the source of the image will provide information. Uh, on who the author is, what the licensing requirement or, or, or what license has been used for those resources. So in the majority of cases of the websites we have recommended for you to practice in searching for uh, images, uh, you will find the license associated with that particular image. So in this particular case with the cat image, you'll see here there's a clear link and if you click on that link, you'll see it will go through to a Creative Commons attribution license. I can click through just to illustrate that. Um, so you'll see here, clicking on that link takes me, says, yes, no, that is an attribution sharer-like license. So, and most of the websites I have shared as examples for this course, the actual images on, uh, if you go to the source of the image, the license would be stated. Uh, we could look at another example uh, for uh, we could let's just go to another website that has got uh, a lot of images the wikimedia uh, commons so let's just uh, do a search here um search for Im images on Fiji. Let's see what comes up. I haven't done a search like this before. Well, let's see here are a bunch of images. Um, on Fiji. Uh, let's see what's an interesting image. Oh, these these uh, hats look interesting. So if I go to that image, I click on there, you'll see an option here, more details. And this is where you'll find the, the full metadata of the image on the Wiki, uh, Wikimedia Commons. So this is interesting. It, it's a, a banner image or uh, a panorama image. Uh, you can see uh, details here. It was taken by this user. So this author, if you need to cite the author's name, it would be Merbabu. Uh, would be the author. So even if they've used a, a, a username or a pseudonym, you can use the pseudonym or the username as the author. But you'll go down here, you'll see that this resource has been uh, licensed under three different licenses. Now you can, uh, in this particular case, you can choose whatever license uh, is appropriate. Uh, the first one there, it just has, so happens that in the early days of uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, they supported the GNU free documentation license before they migrated to adopting Creative Commons because Wikipedia, the Wikipedia project started out before Creative Commons licenses existed. And the GNU free documentation license was in existence prior. Uh, to Creative Commons. So that's why you'd find a number of images in, in the Wikimedia Commons that have both licenses. Um, but in this particular case, you'll see it's a Creative Commons attribution share-alike license. So the, the point I'm making here is um, the majority of websites uh, that uh, host 
openly licensed images will in fact uh, cite the exact license with the metadata of the image. Um, there are some websites, for example, you may do an open internet search where you've used an internet search filter to identify open images and they'll take you to uh, a website that uh, doesn't uh, list the licenses associated with every single image. In those cases, you'll need to go to the terms of reference of the particular website, which will be a link at the bottom of the website, a terms of reference uh, link or um, at, at the bottom of the website. And you'll need to scan the terms of reference of that website to make sure that the license that has been used for that image, it would say something like, unless otherwise specified, all content of this website is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution share alike license. Um, so, for example, you will see um, here under the licensing. So, on the actual, this actual course website, this is an example of a website here, the DS for OERs course, this uh, website that is hosted by Cole. You will see here that there's a clear license statement that content on this website is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution share alike license. So that's just a generic license that's applied to a whole website. So what I'm saying is if you arrive at an image on a website and there's not a clear license statement, you will need to go to the terms of reference of that particular website to confirm that those images are in fact openly licensed. Um, but what is very, very, very important, if you do not see a clear license statement associated with the image, you have to assume that that image is all rights reserved and you cannot use it. In the absence of any clear license statement, you have to assume that it's all rights reserved. Because part of the problem that we have in the real world is sometimes people aren't aware that you actually have to make sure that you're using an open license. And frequently you'll find people doing an image search on Google or some other internet search, and they find a bunch of pictures that they find pretty. And because they found it online, they think that the images are free and in the public domain, and then just say, well, this is under an open license. So the, the fact that you see an open license doesn't necessarily mean it's open. And this is why it's critically important to always reference the source of the image where there's the clear license statement. Because in the event that you get a cease and desist a notification from somebody that says, hey, that image actually isn't under an open license, you actually have an evidence trail, which you can say, no, 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 it's on this website under this correct license. So you, you are le you know, legally clear. So the short answer is yes, you should look uh, for the license associated with the individual image. If it's not there, go to the general conditions of the site uh, of the website to see if there's an open license. If you can't find that, don't use those images. They're, not, uh, they're more than likely all rights reserved and you cannot use those images. So I see there is uh, some uh, question on particularly seeking guidance on images. So I hope I've been able to uh, cover uh, those aspects on, you know, you know, finding images. It also, you know, in, in, in some uh, subject areas, it can happen that you actually uh, don't find uh, many images in, in specialized areas. And, and, and that is where it's maybe possible for, as individual teachers that you could actually take some, you know, take photographs or, or help populate the commons uh, in, in, in terms of uh, getting images. So the other uh, aspect around images uh, in particular relation to uh, the small island uh, developing states, uh, many uh, ministries or, 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 or some ministry websites may actually block uh, access to bandwidth intensive uh, websites uh, in order to conserve costs uh, for, uh, you know, the cost of internet access. 
Uh, and so it may well be possible, or you may well encounter that there is a proxy on the browser that doesn't permit you to access uh, Flickr or another uh, website where uh, there are uh, you know, high bandwidth resources that you can't download. And here, in, in fact, lies the power of OER. Because openly licensed images means that they can be copied and redistributed, it would be possible in the future for uh, ministries in individual countries to make local copies of images available for use of, uh, by teachers in the country so that they don't have to incur international bandwidth in order to access those resources. So at a policy level, there are huge, huge advantages uh, to actually making use of openly licensed materials because it means that we can distribute local copies in country so that institutions don't have to incur international bandwidth costs and ultimately save costs and money for the future. So this is a higher level policy issue. Um, and so if you do encounter any of these challenges, and uh, please let us know, because these are the conversations we can have with governments and point out the, the advantages of having openly licensed policies for teachers to use resources locally. And we won't go into much detail uh, uh, now today, or perhaps we actually do have a bit of time. Um, and th this is, in fact, an example where the uh, use of national uh, OER collections would be a huge strategic advantage for individual countries. And as it so happens, uh, this specific partnership for open distance and flexible learning under the leadership of the Commonwealth of Learning, it has a, an initiative to develop national OER collections uh, using uh, open source software where teachers can actually upload and share resources that could be shared on local bandwidth networks. Um, so I might, if I could, uh, Tony, without uh, just sp springing things on you, you, you might want to just give a sort of a brief introduction uh, on um, the uh, OER collections that you're working on uh, and the technologies. We will spend uh, focus a little bit more on that later uh, in the series. So I don't know if Tony's going to be able to switch his video on. Um, and I'll just hand over to Tony just to give us a, a, a brief summary of the OER collections. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Wayne. Um, maybe if you could stop sharing. I certainly can. Um, as it happens, I have another meeting on Monday, but it's not it's not loading here. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So let me let me not share the screen at the moment we have we have developed a regional repository um, oer collection that has about 250 resources gathered from around the world in a range of um, teacher education areas um, both for how to do deal with things like remote learning blended learning and such like but also specific resources um, tied to teaching early childhood development, primary education, uh, junior, prim uh, junior secondary education, senior sec secondary education, and so on. And we're currently in a process of negotiation with our colleagues in Fiji, where we have mapped the school curriculum um, to their website. So what they're currently doing is they're mapping the resources that we have developed from across the world into their own curriculum tree. Um, and then we're beginning to create a space therefore for the resources that are developed by the people in this course and about 50% uh, or 60% of the participants in this course are from Fiji. The resources that you create as part of this process of being in this course, we can then share with the, min with the administrators appointed by the Ministry of Education. And they will then select which ones of those they want to take into and map to 
the curriculum in the Fiji specific OER collection. And that's something we can progressively do with every country. Once we have a few examples mapped for Fiji, um, in the next, I've got a meeting before our next meeting, next uh, Monday evening for me, we have a meeting at eight for my time. Um, I have a meeting before that with the administrators in Fiji and with our specialist. Um, and I'm hoping that in the week succeeding that we will follow up with every one of the other um, Pacific Island countries to help them to begin to adapt the generic OER collection to map to their own curriculum tree. So that would be everything from ECD through year one, year two, year three, year four, all the way up to um, year 12, 13, and then into TVET, and then into post, um, post school and teacher professional development. So we can be increasingly take what was originally a generic resource across the entire region and increasingly map it and individualize it to every national curriculum. So that is a really powerful way because when you change things there on the national curriculum, on the national OER collection, those changes are immediately available to every single teacher in the country with an internet access. If you, if you compare that to the typical process of trying to develop a, a printed resource, vet it, produce it, order it, put it into stock, dispatch it, by the time it gets to everywhere, it's probably already out of date. Whereas with, with a, a national OER collection, we can instantaneously, in a matter of seconds, update the curriculum. That segues very nicely into some questions that are now in the chat. Um, so we have a few questions. Um, I'm just scrolling down for you, Wayne, and then I will pose them to you. Yeah, that's good. Tony, so, Tony, for some other reason, my the chat window uh, has, yeah, has I think disappeared. If, if you're presenting, you can't see the chat. Um, so one question is, um, what about images that were given to us and allowed by the photographers for us to use? Is it okay to just acknowledge their names as the source? Uh, unless the photographer who's given you the image uh, has applied a open content license to that image. No, you can't. So um, it and this this gets complicated and unless there is a clear open license image associated with uh, that image, uh, you can't uh, reuse it in in the context. We see the problem is if I as a photographer say, hey, you know, uh, Billy, or you know, Tia. I give you this photograph, uh, you know, which you can use to show your family. We don't know if those permissions that the photographer has given allow you to give it to a third party person to make adaptations and sell the image for a profit. It's not clear what those permissions are. And so this is why it's very important that there is a, um, a clear open license that defines in advance the permissions that can uh, that are associated with that photograph. So what I've done in the past where, um, uh, you know, I've been, I've been working with images that uh, have been shared with me by a photographer, um, you know, for whatever purpose, I would just send an email or I'd get in touch with the photographer who gave me the image uh, and say, you know, I would like to use this under an open content license, possibly a CC by share alike license. Do you give permission uh, to apply a CC by SA license on that image? And invariably in 80% of the cases, they will say yes. But in the absence of an open content license, even if the, a photographer has given you rights to use it, that doesn't mean you have the rights to share it on adapted with you know and, and give it to uh, third party people 
So, uh, you know, if in doubt, always be cautious, always look for a clear open content license statement. Thanks, Wayne. I think it's uh, better to err on the side of caution. I Absolutely. think there's a, huge, there's a huge difference between being a classroom teacher in a physical classroom with 30 learners. Uh, probably there's fair copyright, fair usage things will protect you largely. But yep. when you go online, you potentially could be thousands of users of your resource. And so um, copyright owners are going to be very interested in the potential um, income that could be generated from that kind of scale. Um, I think I, I should now, no, I'm still having problems with sharing my screen, so I won't, I won't share a screen. I think we have a follow-up question from Lozana. Lozana might want to pose a question in person. Lozana, are you there? Okay, I can see you, Lozana. You just need to switch off your microphone. Good. Uh, oh, yes. Hello, Lizana. I heard you for a moment there. Um, so your microphone was on at the moment, but just okay, sorry. Again. Yeah, not to worry. Can you, uh, can, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. No, thank you so much because um, oh, I was just, uh, I'm sort of wading through all the reading that's uh, involved in this. And um, well, actually, the last night was the first time that I actually sat down and I was able to understand the quite a lot of what uh, you you are asking of us. Eh? Yeah, that's why I was just asking those questions because um, uh, this is really new for me as a teacher, eh? especially this uh, acknowledging the source and all. And then, yeah. and yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, I will do what you just uh, mentioned about sending them emails and uh, just asking them to, uh, to uh, give me the permission using an open license um, yep. context yep. yeah yep. yeah so yep. yeah yeah I've, I've actually i've been really wading through the the stuff because it's it's all really new for me and uh, yep. i'm learning quite a lot about the digital literacy during this uh this time yeah? so when i'm on this uh, particular platform with you guys man i'm learning so much more thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> and i think my, my my friends around fiji teacher friends around fiji i think they would they would uh, sort of stand with me in that in this that we are just thankful that you people have opened this up for us. It's uh, for me, it's something really new, but it's something very interesting because I share my work a lot. Oh, Actually, yeah. I have sent oh, yeah. my work out to more than 100 teachers. So uh, I like helping teachers. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I'm on this page with you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, and Lozana, I, I thank you so much for your, your kind words. And, you know, if it's any consolation, um, you know, this open licensing and, you know, you know, these digital skills were new for all of us at, at some another point. Uh, you know, Creative Commons licenses only came into existence in 2001. And you can see by my natural highlights, uh, I was around before 2001. Uh, so it was a new learning experience for me as well. Um, but, you know, as an educator, when I discovered that these open licenses, I thought, you know, wow, you know, this is really what, you know, education is about. Education is about sharing knowledge. And, and, and these are the tools that enable us to share knowledge. So even though it, uh, you know, it's new knowledge for, for many educators, uh, you know, we, we are paying our learning forward. You know, what we've learned, we're sharing with you. And, and, and so we're hoping that what you learn uh, in, in this initiative, you will pay forward to other teachers. And this is one of the things we can work towards is collectively, maybe the you know, cohort of these learners in this course, we, we form a community of practice, you know, to uh, you know, sh share the good news, uh, share the good news of open and how we can share resources. So, you know, it's a great pleasure that we can be here to help you along this journey. 
there were many people that helped me uh, getting to the point that uh, I am at my journey. So it's wonderful to be able to give back. And I'm, I know you will do the same as well. So th thank you for those kind words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. Um, I think my colleague, uh, Beth Ganji, who is the Commonwealth of Learning Education Specialist for Teacher Education, is needing to log off. Um, I'm inviting her to, to make a comment before she leaves, if she wants to. Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, good to see you, Wayne. Thank you very much. Um, I should say it's always very refreshing to listen to you talk about OER and licensing and um, we learn every day listening uh, to you and thanks Tony for organizing this. I would just want to say uh, that uh, I would like to commend the teachers who are registered for this course that they are indeed um, on course in um, being better teachers. As someone said, image is everything. We all need images from time to time uh, to use um, on their own and to integrate with other media. And so um, the more I listen, the more I learn personally, I wish I had attended this session much earlier today because I was dealing with a question about a teacher wanting to use an image as a thumbnail on a podcast and not being too sure on how the attribution might be done. I don't think I gave a very good answer, but I could give a better answer having attended this session. So thank you very much and keep going. Um, Col is doing a lot of work in teacher education. Uh, you will, uh, from time to time, encounter many more courses developed as part of this program or as part of other more generic uh, programs at call. And we welcome you each time to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ganji. Um, we will try and get uh, the permanent secretary for Fiji for our next meeting, which will be our Monday evening next week and the Pacific Tuesday morning. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat or the Q&A or any hands up. So I think we probably, because we did schedule for one hour and we're slightly beyond that. So I think we can probably close today. Um, once we've rendered the video, we will share with Wayne to share in the course site, um, probably during the course of tomorrow. So thank you, thank you, Wayne. Um, thank you, Betty. Uh, thank you for um, the background support from Soyen as our project coordinator. But most of all, thank you to all of our colleagues in the Pacific who missed breakfast or missed coffee break in order to join us today. Um, please, we've got another week or so to go. Please make use of all the avenues for communication that are possible to ask questions about anything that's troubling you, um, anything where you need further guidance. There are various avenues um, where you can ask questions. So I think we will close it for here. I'm not quite sure what the correct across nine Pacific Island countries, across the three Pacific regions. I'm not quite sure what would be the best salutation to say goodbye, except for me to say goodbye and thank you. <laughs>